All right, this video is going to be on solubility equilibrium. It is a type of heterogeneous equilibrium, meaning that it involves the equilibrium between two different phases. In this case, equilibrium between a solid ionic compound and its dissociated broken apart species in aqueous solution. So in, in simple ways, we can describe this as the degree to which a solid will dissolve within solution. Now, because it's an equilibrium constant, we'll write it like our other equilibrium expressions with the concentrations of each of the species being raised. Now, the stoichiometric coefficient in both of these, the cation and the anion, are both 1, so they're both raised to the first power. And the solid is omitted from the equilibrium or solubility product equilibrium equilibrium expression uh, because it's omitted in all equilibrium expressions. Now in silver 1 chloride it, it's, it's typically easy equilibrium expression to write because there are coefficients of 1 and so 1 molar equivalent of silver 1 chloride will yield 1 molar equivalent of silver plus cations and 1 molar equivalent of chlorine minus anion. If you look at the case of magnesium fluoride, this will yield, when it dissolves, one equivalent of the cation, but two equivalents of the anion. And so its solubility product expression is going to get a little bit more complex, being that the anion will now have, or will now be raised to the second powder, power in accordance to its coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. Here's a couple more examples. The stoichiometric coefficient of 2 in the cation in this case, and 1 in the anion is reflected in the solubility product expression. Here's one more. And so there's going to be three conditions that are going to be present in the dissolution of an ionic compound in aqueous solution. Right? Now, just like we've done in previous instances of equilibrium, uh, Q, or the reaction quotient, is the concentrations of products and reactants in the equilibrium expression that are present at any given time. Now, if Q is less than KSP, you have an unsaturated solution. All right? If Q is less than the solubility product, meaning that there are less dissolved ions that would normally be present in equilibrium. You have an unsaturated solution, there will not be any precipitate. Everything is going to be dissolved in solution. If Q is equal to the solubility product expression, you're going to have a saturated solution. You're going to have all the dissolved ions that you can in a solution. You're going to have just enough, but there's going to be no precipitate that would form. But if your reaction quotient and uh, the amount of dissolved ions exceeds that, if that reaction quotient exceeds that of the solubility product equilibrium uh, constant, you have a supersaturated solution and a precipitate will form. So if you have too many dissolved ions, the precipitate will form, shifting the equilibrium back, forming more precipitate back by forming more. Right, here are some common solubility product constants, right, so equilibrium constants for common ionic compounds. As you guys can see, some of these have rather small numbers and some of them have uh, relatively larger numbers. Right? The larger the number of KSP, the more easily and readily soluble an ionic compound is in water. The lower the value of KSP, uh, the less soluble it is in water. Now, there's multiple ways in which you can communicate solubility. One is which uh, it's called molar solubility. So it's the number of moles of solute dissolved in a liter of a saturated solution. Notice how they said a saturated solution. Okay, a saturated solution is going to be a solution that contains as much ions as it can dissolve in solution just before a formation of a precipitate would be necessary. Uh, another 
unit of solubility that's commonly used is just called solubility. It's grams per liter, not moles per liter. It's the number of grams of solute dissolved in a liter of saturated solution. And so you're going to be given, this is kind of a you know, pathway for converting between these and quantities. And we're going to talk about these in the following examples. You'd either be given the solubility of a compound in grams per liters. You'd either be given the solubility of a compound in grams per liters. You'd then have to solve for the molar solubility of that compound. And from the molar solubility of that compound, figure out the concentrations of cations and anions. This is when things that, in that first example of, of silver chloride, there was for every one mole of that, there was one mole of each cation and anion. But in some of the other examples, one mole of, of the ionic salt didn't necessarily lead to one cation and one anion. It could lead to more. All right. From the concentrations of cations and anions, you would then figure out the solubility product of the compound. You could also work in the reverse direction. You can go from solubility product of the compound to concentrations of cations and anions to molar solubility and then to the grams per liter of solubility. So let's work through a problem in which we can do that. The solubility of calcium sulfate is found to be 0 0.67 grams per liter. All right, so we're starting with the solubility of the compound, and it's asking us to calculate the, and it's asking us to solve for the KSP. So let's calculate the, that value. So from solubility to molar solubility to concentrations of the ions in solution, and then the KSP. All right, so what's going to happen is that the ionic salt in aqueous solution is going to dissolve and increase the concentration of these two ions in solution. Now it's going to do that by some degree measured by S. So it'll decrease in value by some factor of S and the concentrations of the cations and anions will increase by some value of a factor of X. Right? Just like we used X in the acid-base equilibria, uh, we're just using S as the convention for solubility equilibria. So the solubility product for this right, is the concentration of calcium ion times the concentration of sulfate ion, both raised to the first power. That's going to be equal to S squared. So S is going to be the molar solubility. So we're trying to find the molar solubility from that we're going to get the concentrations of the cations and anions in species. And from that, we're going to get the KSP, or solubility product. So we figure out the number of moles by dividing by the molar mass, molar solubility. And from the solubility equilibrium, we see that for every one mole of this calcium sulfate, we find the molar solubility. And then for every one mole of it, we get one mole of calcium cations and one mole of sulfate anions. So we have the molar solubility, and this is the concentration of the species at equilibrium. Now, using those concentrations, we calculate the solubility product. Right? This was going in the order that was described in the diagram. So we're going to use the data from this table to calculate the solubility of copper 1 hydroxide. So we're going to be working from a solubility product value. Right, we're going to be doing the opposite order. And we're going to calculate the solubility in grams per liter of copper 2 hydroxide. We're going to do that in this example. See, we're working from solubility product of copper 2 hydroxide, solubility product of copper 2 hydroxide, sorry. And then going to solubility in grams per liter. So let's consider the dissociation of copper 2 hydroxide in water. Right, this solid ionic compound is going to dissolve and dissociate by some factor. It's going to decrease by some factor of S. And these two ions are going to increase by a factor of S for the cation, but a factor of 2S 
for the anion. Why a 2s? Because you can see a coefficient of 2, right? One mole of this yields two equivalents of OH minus hydroxide. So you have to put plus S and plus 2S there. Okay. So the case or solubility product expression would be S times 2S squared would equal 4S cubed. 4S cubed. So to solve for the molar solubility, remember the order is find KSP of that, solve for the concentration of the species, and then the molar solubility. Solve for the molar solubility using the KSP expression. Now that you know that's how many moles you have per liter, you can multiply that molar quantity by the molar mass to get the number of grams per liter. Right? That's to get the number of grams per liter. And so in 16.10, this is a problem in which we're going to predict whether a precipitation reaction is going to occur. Right? We're going to predict whether a precipitation reaction is going to occur. Now exactly 200 milliliters of 0.004 molar barium chloride are mixed with exactly 600 milliliters of 0.008 molar potassium sulfate. Will it precipitate form? Uh, let's first uh, look at the ions that will be present in solution. Okay, The ions that are going to be present in solution are going to be the barium 2 plus ion, the chloride anion, the potassium cation, and the sulfate anion. According to the solubility rules that we all know so well, the only precipitate that can form is barium sulfate, right, with all the other combinations being soluble. So from the information given, we can calculate the concentrations of these two ions in solution. And then we can have a value for the ion product, right, that Q, that reaction quotient. We can compare it to the value of the solubility product to see if the solution is unsaturated, saturated, or if it is supersaturated and a precipitate would have to form. So if it's helpful, make a sketch. So now let's, let's first figure out the number of moles of barium present. 200 milliliters of solution for every one liter of solution, you have that many moles. Okay, take your volume, multiply by the concentration, that's how many moles of barium 2 plus ion you have in solution. You then have to take that molar quantity and divide by the total additive volume. So you're not just dividing it by 200, right? Because once you mix the solutions, it's going to be 200 plus 600 milliliters. The total volume that this barium will be in will be 800 milliliters. Take that molar quantity, divide by the total volume, and you're going to get a concentration barium ions in this solution, right? So the number of moles of sulfate are found in the same way. You take the volume, you multiply by the concentration, and then you get that you have 4.8 times 10 to the third moles of the sulfate anion. You take that molar quantity, you divide by the total additive volume, and you get that its concentration is 6.0 times 10 to the negative third. Now, we have to compare Q and KSP. Now, this is barium sulfate dissolving solution. Its KSP value is this. So we're going to figure out its ion product, Q, or reaction quotient, as we've seen before, by multiplying these two. Now, these two values are both raised to the first power because for every one molar equivalent of barium sulfate, there's only one molar equivalent of barium cation and one molar equivalent of sulfate anion. So this ion product comes out to be 6.0 times 10 to the negative 6. It is greater than solubility product, being that there is currently a higher concentration of these anions in solution that, it's, that is allowed at equilibrium. The equilibrium is going to shift to the left and cause precipitate to form. So precipitate will form out of the solution until the concentration or the product of the concentration 
equals the ksp again.